I know that with the beautiful music of the choir, we have already prayed, but I'm going to ask you all to join me in prayer anyway and as well. Lord, as we approach your word, illumine our hearts and minds so that we may understand what you have to say to us today. In Jesus' name, amen. When Jesus interrupts the disciples after their night's work, he does so as an already sought after preacher and teacher. This story of the call of the disciples is a little different from some of the ones we're accustomed to in other gospels, where Jesus is someone new on the scene and he's kind of a lonely figure out on the beach calling Peter and Andrew. In this gospel, Jesus has already been teaching and preaching. People know who he is. They know that he's someone to pay attention to. And still, the disciples are surprised by his command to let their nets down in deep water. It's one thing to listen to someone teach and preach. It's something entirely different to have to go back out again, back out into the lake after a full night's completely futile work. The results are so startling. The overflowing nets and the sinking boats, the boats so filled with fish, and apparently eels and snakes as well, that, that it's clear that in this interruption of their lives, Jesus is teaching them something else. When has God interrupted you recently? Sometimes we expect God. Sometimes we're in the right place at the right time. Isaiah in the temple might have expected some form of encounter with God, although perhaps not quite such a dramatic one. But here in church, like Isaiah in the temple, we might expect that we encounter God in some way, whether through the music, whether through the prayers, whether through our own thoughts or through the scripture reading or the preaching. We do expect, to sh we do expect for God to show up in the sanctuary. Sometimes God interrupts us in the context of those huge events of life that we really don't want anything to do with. Those big losses and disruptions, the loss of a job, the sudden diagnosis of a life-threatening illness. And at those times, we're not even all that surprised to realize that God may be reaching out to communicate with us. But sometimes, perhaps often, perhaps even all the time, God interrupts us as Jesus did the disciples. We're in the, when we're in the midst of our most ordinary activities, on our most ordinary kinds of day, whether we're at work or at home, out in our neighborhood, out in the grocery, God interrupts us to tell us to head for deeper water and to put out our nets. Of course, there are a lot of demands on our time and energy. It's hard to know. How do we know when it's Jesus who's doing the interrupting? How do we sort that out from everything else that bombards us each day? I think there are two ways that we know. One has to do with the abundance that always characterizes the call of Jesus, and the other is in his invitation that we too respond with extravagance. I looked those words up on thesaurus.com when I was thinking about it this week because I wanted to know what besides the thoughts in my own head characterized those kind of words, words that we might use all the time to think about Jesus and what he's doing in our lives. And the list of words I came up with included words like lavish and immoderate and prodigal and wild and imaginative and creative and unexpected. The truth is Jesus is always interrupting us with unexpectedly lavish invitations. In this story, it looks at first like fish are at stake. 
It might remind us of some of the other gospel stories where fish and other ordinary kinds of food are involved. Maybe we think about the feeding of the 5,000 when Jesus manages to make a meal for all of those people out of a few fishes and loaves of bread. Maybe we think of the resurrection appearances when Jesus cooks fish for his disciples on the beach, when he shares a meal with the couple of disciples that he runs into on the road to Emmaus after his resurrection. Maybe we even think of the Last Supper when the ordinary food of bread and the ordinary drink of wine are transformed into something else. Fish in ancient times was a staple food. Fishing was a very common commercial enterprise. And who among the disciples would have expected there to be anything at all very significant in a catch of fish or a no catch of fish, which is what happened to them that night? Who among us remembers to look for abundance in our everyday lives? Sometimes we do see that we have a surplus of resources. Some of us are blessed with financial and material extras, things that we can share, things that we can use to serve others. Some of us are fortunate enough to find that we have gifts and talents also in abundance, other resources for serving other people. Sometimes abundance comes in the form of opportunities, whether it's opportunities we have to serve others or even opportunities that present themselves to others. Someone asked me a few weeks ago about something she was thinking about getting involved in, and then she concluded, no, that's too much time. I can't do that every single day. Well, it might have been one of those missed invitations to abundance. I don't know about you, I do that all the time. Sometimes abundance comes in the form of friendship and help when we need others to help us. And sometimes what we encounter is an abundance of need. I was reading a book a few weeks ago and it was about a woman who decided that what she was going to do was go and volunteer for Mother Teresa. She's actually a college professor, a professor of education in California and she was new to Christianity. I think she had joined a Methodist church but she decided that she wanted to serve God more tangibly. And so she would volunteer to go to Calcutta in India and help Mother Teresa and her sisters. She sent off a letter, nothing happened, nothing happened for months, and her sabbatical, the time she was planning to use for this opportunity, was drawing closer and closer and other opportunities were presenting themselves. One of them was a lectureship in, in, in England, which I thought sounded like a pretty nice way to spend your sabbatical. And she had about given up on this idea of going to India when almost at the last minute, a tattered envelope arrived saying, yes, you're welcome to come. So she put everything together really quickly and went off to Calcutta for two months, where of course she encountered an abundance of need in the form of people sleeping on the streets, people ill on the streets, people looking for food on the streets. She was not lacking in work to do. We tend to think of abundance of need in those kinds of ways, in the things we do here in church, in the things we do through Interact, in the provision of shelter for the homeless and of food for the hungry. And sometimes it seems clear the need is obvious and we know just what to do if we're willing to make the time to do it. 